Now, uh, one of the uh, kind of things that people carry on about who don't want to do AV is that um, range anxiety issue. Mm. But I notice, for example, I've got a sick energy at the moment, and I've got eight kilowatt hour stacks. Uh, SunGrow, uh, we have some as well, and they got five kilowatt hour stacks, but they used to be 3.2, and they go into a five, same size. The Seek has an 8, but they announced down the track they'll really have a 10, mm. same size. So the density of batteries and the ability to get stuff out of batteries is actually improving. So I would say down the track we will have 600, 700, 800 kilometer ranges. Would you say by then the whole game is over in terms of argument on range? I think so. Like There's two ways to tackle range anxiety. So you can either increase the charging speed of the battery, or you can increase the battery size or density. Mm. So <clears throat> I think most Australians don't need to charge that quickly, nor do they need such an, that much range, as we talk, talked about earlier. Like we don't need to drive that much in, in our country or in our cities. So yes, if you want that range, yes, the price point will be there. So we're talking solid state batteries, super dense, 500 watt hours per kilograms. Um, that's, I think that's the gold standard eventually. Um, that'll give you a thousand Ks of range potentially for the same size of car that we've got now. And if, you, if you're if you a busy tradie or a ute or, or, a, or a rep, then you need that range to drive every day, sure. But most Australians, we don't need that. We're also talking quick charging speeds. So in China, they're developing one megawatt speeds. At the moment, we're at the, if we're lucky we, to get 150, so like almost 10 times the charging speed. Um, so if you can charge your EV in five to 10 minutes, that's the same as petrol. Then you're right, it is probably game over uh, at that point. Why mm. would you buy a petrol car that can that'll take the same amount of time to fill as an EV at the mm, moment. So, mm, yeah, mm. right. But, I mean, then it's got huge geopolitical issues too because if we suddenly don't need oil anymore, uh, maybe the Middle East will be peaceful. Uh, I mean, we're going really tricky. Wow, that's deep. Very tricky <laughs> subject here. Now. I'm not going to mention the word Israel. We'll leave that out of the podcast. Elon and Israel. Mm, that'd be an interesting one. Anyway, we'll move straight ahead. I'm noticing Thomas is getting a bit itchy. It's above my pay grade, actually. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> so we should give you little paddles when That's I ask right. the tricky things. No comment. Yeah. No comment. I just cough once. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you think it's over when it's eight hundred k's and we can charge it? In, and do you think that's possible? I think so. We we saw in China already. It already is it's possible available in other countries. That's uh, the thing. Uh, uh, going uh, overseas, you just because and and we we did a, a a road trip in the UK last year as well, um, and just seeing how easy it was to charge there. You don't need to plan your road trip you don't need to you know say where are all my charging stops going to be you can just as you would do here in a petrol car you can just drive yeah. and then when you're low on charge you just turn into the you know the there's, there's that the many there is it yep. you just do your google map and it just lights up bingo Absolutely. while yeah. in australia do your google map and you have to tap it twice <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then suddenly something just fades out in the yeah. distance and there's like <laughs> You know, like more than the eye can see, there's like, you know, one one stop will have like 30 charges. And we're not talking London here. We're talking, you know, like mm. on the drive up to Scotland. So it's, you're, you're not... In the in, regions. Yeah, mm. you're, you're in the regions. Um, and the other thing is that you don't have to fuss around with an app and download this and have all of that. You just tap your credit card on the on the um Unit. on the yeah. on the machine yeah. and that's so it. so really nice i mean to to our politicians then uh, let's start with albo and uh, chris bowen um there are room for improvements in the whole charge infrastructure at the moment we left it to the market mm. but there is because on your show it's kind of like oh there's a new charge station opened it's it's one booth it's <laughs> in the middle of wagga yay and i, I hear the applause going <clears throat> in the background and in China, they would have done 50. Yeah. Hold my beer, says China. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you're right. Um, so I'll give you some context. So there's 7,000 petrol stations in Australia. There's only 1,400 EV charging stations. So we're about a sixth of the way there. Right. Um, I know. And, and we need, we, as Joyce said, we need banks of 20 plus per store, uh, per station, if you want to be serious about EVs in Australia. Right, right. So so one single one at the back of the NRMA building uh, that you have to find through the back lane. It's not going to cut it. Right, right, okay. But I mean, Tesla has discovered an opportunity there and they are doing and developing an infrastructure uh, segment which mm -hmm. will help them in the market. Mm -hmm. But they were always just for Tesla cars, which I thought was a little bit discriminatory. Are they opening them up? Yeah, so I guess Tesla made it Tesla only initially because that was the, ch the premium they were charging to their owners because that was the, I guess that was the, um, the benefit of owning Tesla. You could charge it their network. But and it was for free, was it? 
Initially, yes, but not anymore. Hasn't been free for like five plus years. But is it like the first guy who bought it, he's, is he still getting it for free? Yeah, so my Model S is in lifetime grandfathered in, so it's free for life. They never so sell that car. Selling that car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, is it going over to the new owner? It does to the new owner, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. So at the moment, because um, the New South Wales government and other governments around Australia have partially co-funded a lot of new charges, a lot of new Tesla superchargers are now open to all tes uh, to all vehicles, so not just Tesla, which is really good. So because Tesla is still, I think, the most reliable DC charging network in Australia. Right, yeah. right. Well, so BP is moving into it. So we, who else gives us uh, charging stations? Yeah, so BP, uh, Ampol's another one. Uh, you got independents like EV, EV EVIE, uh, ChargeFox. Yeah, so there's a few players out there, but we're waiting for the, the big player that will be happy to put out banks of charges along the Hume Highway, Pacific Motorway. Mm. That's what we need to give that confidence to, to new owners, I think. I mean, I think the ideal place would be Bunnings. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and probably because they've got the grid to support that as well, because that's normally the excuse where they say like, oh, we'd love to put one here, but the, um, the, the network, the grid can't actually support that kind of like juice coming through. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, if you excuse. put a big enough uh, solar carport, uh, let's make it 150, 200 kilowatts, and then have a huge battery bank, decent size behind it, yep. then a lot of times you could even really at least charge 10, 15, 20 cars um, by just total renewable. Exactly. And they've got the footprint, right? They've got the car parks generally mm. for Bunnings. Mm. So you could easily use 10 for charges and it wouldn't affect the whole mm. car park. I mean, there are now um, carports available. Goodwill's making a good one. I recently mm. checked one out. So you could actually have the whole Bunnings car park that's currently open yep. covered in solar. That solar then go into nearby batteries. Those batteries then help charging. Yep. And because they've got the batteries, you could even drive to your Bunnings car park at night, becomes a lover's lane, <laughs> and charge your EV at the same time. Correct. Yep. Bunnings, if you start doing that, I want a commission. <laughs> Not just Bunnings, but other nationals too. McDonald's, KFC, you know, any mm. big company out there, Office Works, what else, Ikea, yeah. they could do it But too. the fast food is good, especially on road trips, because chances are people are going to be stopping there anyway for food mm, mm, and supplies. Mm, so. mm, mm. Now, I've got a curly one here for you mm. because that's the one thing that annoys me a bit about EVs, which is this. And I think some anti-EV people bring this up. My car is now getting 10 years old. The battery now is down to, let's say, 70%. Now... And I'm getting a bit annoyed with it. I think, oh, I really, I'm driving distance. I can't have it. Do I now invest in a new battery or is my car actually a write-off and is that actually planned and those all these cars are really only planned for 10 years and obsolescence and they're going into the tip what do we do when i'm 10 years old uh is a car and with my ev and the battery starting to go down too much and i want to change it is it economically really worth it or do i just flog it onto the second hand market I think, first of all, I think that's a bit of a myth at the moment. So when I first got my Model S, people were asking me, well, what happens when your battery dies in two years, like your laptop or your phone? <laughs> and I said, well, let's let's see. Well, I'll see you in 10 years. And 10 years down the track, which is today, uh, I checked last year, my degradation was down to 7%. So I still have 93% of my battery after 10 years. Um, and that's with the old battery chemistry, NMC, which you have to charge to 80 90%. With the new batteries coming out of China, which is LFP, lithium ion phosphate, you can charge to 100% and the degradation is less. So, I so think, you're actually saying in 10 years' time I won't have a problem with my battery? I don't think so. I think batteries are lasting a lot longer than what people are thinking. Um, and because of that, it's kind of a, a two-edged sword because because of the batteries lasting longer, the recycling industry has not had a chance to develop because there's less batteries to recycle. Mm. So yes, there are sort of black mass recycling plants in America and probably in China too, but in Australia, we have not seen that just yet. But I think as time goes on, yes, batteries obviously will degrade over time. There's only a finite number of cycles in a battery. Then yes, I think we need to talk about recycling. Maybe in, in maybe batteries are lasting 20 years instead of 10 years, but that has to, the time has to come when that has to happen, mm. I think. Mm. You understand we just have the battery uh, rebate coming through the federal one and I always thought it was a bit of a waste in that 2.3 billion of federal investment that they haven't put 100 million aside mm -hmm. to support some kind of battery recycling scheme because that's going to be the big headache mm -hmm. and there are very very cheap batteries now sold that I can't see lasting longer on the price point than just a few years so that battery recycling need 
is possibly starting right now. Mm-hmm. But there is there anything in the game already? Like if I had now a Tesla Model S battery that has died, what do I do with it? Yeah, that's true. I I I, I don't have a good answer for you at the moment. I think I think that needs to be a, a, a solution thought out by the government, yep, or at least the private enterprise to deal with it. Yep. Right. I mean, maybe putting a small tariff at the beginning of the car to then have that money available in a pool, a bit like the bottle uh, deposit <laughs> scheme, yeah. and have that like the battery recycling scheme. Yeah. I mean, there got to be something done sooner rather than later, because that's what gives the industry a bad name. Yeah, correct. I think some individual companies have like acknowledged that and they have some sort of battery recycling. Like I think BYD said that they take the batteries back, or, the, or they've got a plan for the mm. old batteries, and was it Polestar? Polestar probably do. Yeah. They're very conscious of that. Yeah. Polestar like to blockchain and trace where their uh, their you know rare earths come from to develop the batteries. So I'm sure they've got something set up for that as well. Mm. Right. But right. then again, it it just becomes down to the individual companies at this mm. point, which is probably not good enough. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. Want more energy answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.